Hello folks. Well I made this video for those who are seriously interested in night flying RC aircraft. The first part is a glimpse into the beginnings of night flying and how it took hold after I wrote the articles about what we learned about night flying in the early 70s. Most of my writings were about how to mount a light so when the plane was at any angle you could always see it while you're still standing on the ground. It's kind of important when you fly in total darkness but it's more challenging and fun anyway. The next part is about the easy lights, how they work, and what feature was not included in their design. Then I'm going to show you how I built the portable charger so you could recharge all the lights at once in about 20 minutes. Then the next part is a demo of my Beaver with lights in the dust to make sure they all stayed lit and didn't fall off the plane. The next part is of the beaver then flying with the lights blinking at random to show the difficulty in trying to fly that when it's dark. And then the next part is my modification to the red and green lights making it easier to see. And the last part is of it flying with my light mods so you can see the difference. I know this is about 20 minutes long but I think you're going to enjoy it so please sit back and fly with me. Here we go. When I first started night flying back in 1976, we didn't have anything but those little red or green LEDs that you couldn't use to fly that weren't very bright. So we used chem lights or snap lights and 5 volt bulbs. So taking what we learned, I decided to write on it 5 years later. In 1982, 40 years ago, I wrote the first article ever published on night flying at RCM Magazine. After that, I convinced the members of my flying club at the time to try it, and we all did it regularly because everybody was having a lot of fun. And 10 years later, I was still writing about it, again, here in Model Airplay News in 1992, plus others. Well, since we had no LED strips back then, we always flew with FAA colors. That is, red left wing, green right wing, red tail blinker, and a white belly strobe. And all my articles really had to do with being able to see the lights at the all angles when standing on the ground. It was really important to us as we always waited till pitch dark, not dusk. No, you couldn't see the plane at all, only the lights. So for an example of this, if the right green wing light disappears in a wide left turn, which it'll do, that's not good for staying oriented. So I showed how to install the lights and make light extenders that I devised to get more visibility out of just one bulb. Well, that went over pretty good and more and more people started doing it and I convinced the members of my flying club at the time to try it and we wound up all doing it pretty regularly every night flying club meeting there was. All those years though I tried different light setups and even made a board with all the ones that we actually did try. Here I'm showing some pictures of that right now. I wish the stuff hadn't been destroyed in the fire. Well, as you can see, I've tried plenty of different kinds, and we had some pretty reliable ones with the blinkers and strobes. But today, with all the bright LEDs and of all colors, they still need to be attached and wired in place. So when I saw the first set of easy lights that looked like real lights, <laughs> well, if you're the night flyer, what do you think? <laughs> of course, I bought them. They're completely self-contained with battery and are aerodynamically shaped. They look really nice on any plane and they are beautiful. So I decided to put them on my FMS DHC2 Beaver. This is the one that I usually fly with floats and it's pretty big and a lot of fun to fly. I sounded a smooth spot on the wing next to the dim lights that it already has. Applied the clear stickers that they give it to use to put on your plane and then applied the double sticky back tape to the lights and stuck them on that clear sticker. They seem quite tight okay, but I put a piece of clear tape over it just in case. course is your rotating beacon at the top and I would set it for that blank right there. Okay. 
comes with a really neat little 70 milliamp charger. You have to charge eight lights separately. That's a pain. Also, I tried charging with my 5 volt portable, you know, battery. So I'm telling you this because you might want to do this yourself. So I decided to use a charger that we probably all have that really works good and especially for these lights. That's that old E-Flight battery charger. It's perfect portable and it's designed to charge the tiny batteries for planes, you know, like the Mini Vapor, etc. Well, next I used some servo extension wires and made myself a harness that can charge three easy lights at once in parallel. Plus I made a port to plug in my battery tester and I can now see the total charge of the batteries and the lights, the charge of each battery, plus the charge of the batteries inside the charger. So let's see how this all works. If you put this in the wrong way, you're going to burn out the charge system in the battery. So, plus is always to the front. So you've got to plug that in to the front, in that little slot right there. Well, note that the USB charger that's included only charges at such a slow rate I could not get the peak voltage to go any higher than about 4 volts. But using my E-Flight charger as shown, it actually charges all three batteries at once to 4, 18, 19 volts, as it should be. Got them all charging here. So when that red light goes out, all three will be charged. Okay, I've got a, a port plug connector that I've added here so I can check the voltage. This is the total voltage of this unit right now. So if, and this one on the left wing is unplugged right now so because I can't reach it to show you how this works and uh, the other one is plugged in right here to this and they are charging and that's what this red light is. Okay, so if I disconnect the charger Now, the total voltage between those two is 401, because it's not fully charged yet. Forget the all or number one. There's only one cell. I unplug the green light. Now, only the strobe light will show me the voltage. So the strobe light is at 402. That's this one right here. If I plug this back in over here, and unplug the strobe light. Now you can see the green light is 394. Okay, so I'm going to put them all on charge now. Make sure plus is to the front. Okay, that's charging. Alright, let's see how bright they are now. Oh man, that's just insane. After my water flights, I always spray these wing connectors with the contact cleaner. Who, you know, who wants intermittent servos? Okay, let's try a little dust flying. Make sure to keep watching for the night flying. Well, this is a test flight to make sure all the lights stay on during the flight. It's kind of important and that they don't fall off. <laughs> Note they are blinking randomly. Okay. 
So here's a little real night flying where the lights really count in the dark. God, it's hard to see over there. You know, if it wasn't for those two headlights on the front of the leading edge, I'd have a hard time keeping the plane level. But I've been doing it for years, so I get a lot of mental flying in here. So as you can see right away, there are issues, especially with me flying this on the ground with this setup. Can you see why? Well, I thought the blinking lights were going to be better, but uh, that's just very confusing. Well, okay, just like the old days, it's really hard to fly blinking lights when you can't see the plane. This is a scale light setup, but when you're trying to stay oriented on the ground, you need to see the lights all the time and not blinking. It would be better, at least, if they would stay in sync, you know, both blink at the same time, but they don't. Our USMC Phantom Jets had a circuit to make the light steady or flash, but they flash together, not randomly. So here's my solution for the lights. Well, these lights are cool, but they're also waterproof, so I carefully used a razor saw to remove the bottom. I then figured out how to bypass the blinkers, as shown, to make a steady light using the tiny dip switch to do it. I still have full capability for the three modes of flash, but now I also have steady. So let's see how that looks. Okay, here's my finished product. I've uh, welded the bottom back on with a uh, soldering iron, and uh, it still has all the functions. So, for example, if I want to just have it flash, the flash button is right here, just like normal. So if I push that once, I have this uh, flash. Press it again, I've got a different flash. Press it out again, and I've got breathing. Press it again, and I got it off. There is no all the way on. So, what I did was I mounted a little dip switch right here on the side, as you can see. And all I have to do is flip that switch on, and I've got a permanent on light. So let's say you have it onto one of your uh, blink modes, but you turn it on and then turn on your power full on all the time. Now, if something happens to the switch or the wire in there that you soldered or something went wrong and, it, and that switch failed like this, it goes back. So you still have a chance to save your airplane. Another thing, when you take that bottom off of this, You've got to be very careful with the razor saw because you're so close to that little battery, you can damage it easily. So that's it. Shut it off just like this. And everything's the same. So uh, I'm going to put it on charge and we're going to put it on a plane. We'll take it out and see what it does. All right, folks. I'm just waiting for a little dark now. Hey, the first thing I'm doing is just going to turn on Stock lights. These are the stock lights. And I'm old school. And old school means I fly traditional. So that means a strobe on the belly.
rotating beacon on the rudder. And lights on the wings. Now the problem here is they're both blinking at different times. That makes it very difficult to see what's going on in the air. So that's not the way it is on real planes. Here's my solution. Well, as I mentioned before, when we first started night flying, we only knew FAA colors. There was no buddy flying around with their airplanes all lit up. There wasn't any real way to actually do that that would work. Uh, today's LEDs, it's different. But, uh, you know, you get used to it. Red's always left, and uh, how can you lose? just want you to note that Ilea is shooting this with my iPhone 11 uh, camera and uh, it automatically lightens the screen but when I switch to the GoPro you're gonna see the dark dark because it's actually pretty dark out here lights on all the time that is tradition Again, flying in dusk is really uh, different, you know, where you can see your airplane. But really, if you're going to fly in the dark, it's much easier to have the airplane look like a real airplane. And you can easily fly it. Don't believe it? Go ahead and try it. GoPro, start recording. <laughs> You know, folks, when I was a little kid back in the 1950s, I remember lying on my back in the grass at the night looking up at the planes flying over. Those lights were and are how it was for them, and so it only made sense for us that was a logical way to fly our scene in the dark. So for me still today, this is the most comfortable way for me to fly with steady wing lights that are easy to see from all angles and thus never get disoriented. Plus, when I fly like this, it reminds me of my childhood days looking up at those planes. So thanks so kindly for watching. Please fly easy and stay safe. This is Dave the Night Flyer signing off for now. Oh, and hey... Now that's night flying. If you don't mind hitting the like button plus the subscribe button and bell, I would appreciate that too.